All right, I need to start this video by saying this is not a great circuit, but it's a great teaching circuit. So let's, uh, let's give this a try. All right, so I have my uh, 555 timer and I've uh, just got some stuff on it here. Normal 555 timer stuff. Let's take a look. Yep, square wave, but we don't want a square wave. Uh, I don't want a square wave in this, in this uh, circuit. I want pulses. I want to have pulses come out. Okay, and so how do I do that with a 555? Uh, let me do this. I'll do the trick. I'll show it to you first. Uh, so there we go. I've just made a, a pulse generator out of a 555. So how did I do that? Okay, how did I change that duty cycle so quick? All right, well, what I did was put a diode right here, okay. Put a diode across this resistor. So in one direction, it uh, ramps, remember the, the 555 diameter ramps up and then ramps down and then ramps up and then ramps down. Uh, I did a whole series on 555 timers. Um, and so this uh, resistors in here create the RC time constant for the up and the down. But if you put a diode in here, you've, uh, you've uh, created a, a short, short path, uh, a, a sneaky way around. So it goes up one direction, but it's quickly down the other direction. So uh, it makes it non-symmetric. And uh, so we're gonna leave that in there. So now we have a nice, a nice pulse generator. Okay, now that we have the pulse generator, let's take a look at uh, this point here uh, on the uh, on the circuit. Turn the scope trigger on there. There we go. All right, so uh, this gives us our uh, pull down. So when the uh, 555 turns on, it pulls that that end uh, end channel MOSFET down. And then it lets it go, and woo, and then you get this ringing of uh, of it. So that seems to be working just great. And then we can uh, also superimpose on top of that. That's the the output, okay. And so that's uh, through the diode and over here on the capacitor. All right. So uh, there we go. We have all all the waveforms. Let me get rid of channel one because I think it's just too confusing. So there we go. That's a typical. Typical waveform. Now we want to turn this into a, a boost converter that has voltage regulation. Okay, so how are we going to do that with a 555? How do we do voltage regulation? Okay, so well we need we know we need to pull it pull this off. We're not going to we're going to need to measure the voltage on the output, and that's typically done by putting it through some type of resistor. Okay, so we'll put it through a. Uh, a potentiometer here. You like my potentiometer? Well, I drew that good, didn't I? All right. And so then if uh, this voltage is too high, we want to stop the 555. And if this voltage is too low, we want to start up the 555. Uh, well, we're going to do that with this circuit. Okay. There we go. We're done. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. So uh, let me show you it working first, then I'll explain to you why it works, okay? Okay, so here's our waveform. And I'm going to adjust that uh, potentiometer. And there we go. See the voltage go down? So the voltage is going down. And uh, it seems to work. Now it's jittering and doing some other things. Um, depending on the, the conditions of the thing. Um, so what I'm going to do here is show you why this works. Um, so first of all, this is a 2N7000. Okay. And the gate the gate turn on voltage is about, in this particular case, it ends up being about 1.2 volts. So if it's higher than 1.2 volts, this transistor turns on. And if it's lower than 1.2 volt, this transistor turns off. And we're bringing this into pin five. You remember the magic pin five, the pin five that no one ever, 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 ever uses? Well, guess what? I'm using it. <laughs> so what is the 555? What is pin five on the 555? Uh, there's a, uh, 
Internal to the 555, there's three 5K resistors. 5K, 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 all right? And this voltage right here, the 66.66% voltage right there, goes outside the package on what? On pin five. So if we ground pin five, we're basically sending each, we're sending all, all these two. So these two, these two voltages are used in two different comparators, right? One of them compares it against pins two, and one pin two and six, one of them compares it against seven. Um, and what we're doing is when we're pulling down pin five, we're setting both of those voltages to zero, right? Because this is, this is ground down here. And this is uh, plus 12 up here. So when we set pin five to, uh, to ground, we're just killing that, uh, killing this um, comparator circuit so it can't work anymore. And uh, it seems to sort of work. <laughs> like I said, this is not the greatest circuit. Um, I just wanted to see if I could do it. And uh, I think it's kind of, a, kind of a fun thing to do. So I'm turning the pot again. I'm turning it down, turning it up. It's kind of fun if you don't put in, I have a little bit of load on the circuit. If I get rid of the load on the circuit, uh, and I use the 555 in this particular case, um, it's really quite interesting here. I'm going to, I'm going to turn it down. Now there's a 330 microfarad capacitor on the output. So with no load on it, it takes it a while to go down. All right. Um, until it finally gets to the voltage where I'm telling it, Hey, I think you should start regulating again. Uh, and I've adjusted it too far. I'm sorry. Adjusted it so it will never do that. So let me, let me bring it up. There we go. So there we go. I'm just starting to turn it on and you can see that, uh, it's not, the 555 is not oscillating at the, at the regular frequency. And that's because it doesn't need to, it's holding off. Um, that pin five grounds and it says, Oh, I'm not really needed anymore. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining that correct. If I tell it, I need more voltage, then it says, Oh, you better start turning on more and more and more and more. There have gone up a little too far. And then it, when it sagged back down, it's up. Oh, now you need to start firing again. So let me increase the load a little bit. It, it'll be a little more stable here. Here we go. All right. So hopefully this will demonstrate well. So if I turn it, if I turn it way down, it says, no, nice, I don't need to work very hard down here. And if I start turning it up, it says, oh yeah, maybe I should, maybe I should go, I go way up. It says, it says, okay. That looks good. And it's, 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 it's only going to fire when it needs to fire. Um, it's, it's really quite a clever circuit. Uh, here it's going down. Oh, and it says, Oh, I need to start firing again. So let me put a little bit more load on it. So it acts a little bit, acts a little bit faster. There we go. That's really interesting. I go, if I go up, say I want more voltage. It fires real fast and then it slows down a bit. And then if I remove the load, it says, oh, I don't need to quite work so hard here. I'm removing some of the load. Oh, I don't need to work so hard. And it, it's, it spreads itself out. So. so I hope that makes sense. Um, like I said, we're, we're using this pin five as a hold off. We're just telling the 555, don't do anything until I finally let go. It's like an enable pin. Pin five is being used as an enable pin. And, um, and then there's this 1.2 volt reference gate voltage. So it's like a, it's like a poor man's comparator to do it correctly. You really should have a comparator and stuff in here. But, um, yeah, uh, if it's above 1.2 volts, go ahead and don't do anything. If it's below 1.2 volts, it says, Oh, better start working harder.